You forgot our straws! Orale, Miguelito! Already fucking up on the first week! ¿Vas a la escuela con esos muchachos? No. ¿Y cómo estuvo el trabajo? Lo mismo, ya sabes cómo me va, Miguel. ¡Hey, Mikey! ¡Hurry the fuck up with our food! Annalie, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well, and you? I'm great, excited to talk about your film on Slauson. Am I saying correctly? On Slauson? On Slauson, perfect, yeah. Slauson is a street, yeah? It's a popular street in, I would say, LA, in my neighborhood. I grew up here in Slauson, and it's, it's near my high school, so I kind of had some inspiration from that. Well, I thought that your two things your how fast we cared about your lead character um was fantastic it, uh, the performance was beautiful and how you created tension was also masterful um so without spoiling the movie um mm -hmm. can you tell us about how how you got into the story and and what led to you developing this yeah um so first my uncle not to give out too many too much information, but he was in an East LA gang at a very young age. He was 14. And my parents, my my dad, they grew up in that area and they always told me stories about how it was different times. Um, I think with like technology now, kids aren't as much in the streets, but I mean back in the early nineties, people were finding ways of becoming men by joining gangs or they were, you know, trying to make friends in that way or find a family. And so I took inspiration from that, as well as noticing that a lot of gang films depicted, you know, very gory tragedy, or they had a lot of, um, you know, stereotypes that I wasn't necessarily seeing growing up. And I felt like I hadn't seen a, a film about someone joining a gang without like those ugly parts. I wanted to more so focus on issues of identity, um, living a double life, um, showing someone who still we can empathize with and we can see the softer side of him with his family. And so that was really my, my main focus for this film. And it was um, what I was trying to achieve the entire time in um, the short. I think you really achieved it. Um, and it's interesting what you just said a second ago, something I've never thought about till this moment. When you think about technology nowadays, you think about kind of the negative side of it, right? That because of technology, people aren't out there know, playing with the ball or being in nature, but technology actually can also be helpful and not being out there looking for trouble because you found a, find a community um, and friendships in the palm of your hand at some points. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you went to UCLA, correct? I did, yes. Yeah. And then so was this one of your first films after UCLA? Was this your senior thesis? Um, did you mm -hmm. write the script? Yeah, this was my senior thesis. Uh, a lot of my classmates knew that I was writing this script, though, well in advance, like during my sophomore year of college, just because... Knowing myself, like, I really wanted to make sure that if I pursued the directing concentration at UCLA, that I was not doing it just because, like, it was cool, but because I actually had something that I wanted to talk about. And so this script, when it came to mind, it was something that I felt very passionate about, and it felt like something that I did have to do. And if I didn't, I'd be doing a disservice to myself, you know? And so that's the only reason, really, why I concentrated in directing, because I had a script. Um, I really wanted to do it and talk about it. And I had resources around me. My family was supporting me and it came together, really. That's awesome. Um, and so tell us a little bit about the production side of it. Um, how did you lock down this diner, which I mean, is like, just looks like an awesome real life working <laughs> diner. Yeah. Um, so this diner is like a few blocks from my high school. I grew up going there. You grew up going to that diner? That's awesome. Yeah, I did. And um, essentially all I did was just location scout. You know, I had a producer that was very helpful. 
um, outside a creative producer named Kyle. He works for a nonprofit now called Ghetto Film School. And we literally just went door to door to different restaurants I had in mind in my neighborhood because I also wanted to keep like the integrity of the city and, you know, be somewhere that obviously represents like where I grew up. And so that restaurant came to mind with like, you know, the mural in the background and the sort of old school vibe, you know, restaurant. And I think when I walked into this place, I was really happy to see that it hadn't been renovated in a while, <laughs> which by the way, it has after the film, they, they, oh, they wow. changed it up. And so, um, the You're nice able part to keep about its memory in the film. Exactly. Exactly. The nice part about filming in your neighborhood is people tend to be a lot nicer to you. So it was, um, very seamless to, to get approval to film there. Awesome. And talk to us about your lead actor. Um, Again, because what what I thought was so well done is with very little dialogue, um, you can really feel that tension and that pain. And I, I kind of loved him super quickly. Mm -hmm. That was all um, Valentin who, who plays uh, Miguel. Like, I think that was not something that I could have ever, I could have ever directed or controlled, you know, how likable this character would have been off the bat and that was ideal of course because I was only working with maybe 10 minutes worth of script you know pages and I don't know I think he so seamlessly shows like I said the softer side of the adolescent boys you know he's supposed to be like maybe a senior in high school and so it's like at that time a lot of us feel pressured to grow up but we're very much kids at that time and we're still figuring ourselves out, what we want to do, where we belong. And so I think Valentin, the actor who played um, Miguel, he he so seamlessly showed that nuance and he his face is packed with emotion all throughout the film. And he very subtly transitions from this nonchalant list, this kind of, I don't want to say machista, but a little bit of this like ego and pride. And then you see like that transformation to him completely crumbling you know um from the vulnerability of his mother being there so i really just give him full props and of course i you know i, I gave mean, my you direction ca you, ca you cast him so that's the big part <laughs> of directing right especially True. when you shoot things quickly um and uh, well yeah he's definitely layered you saw that he's vulnerable yet i also you could feel like he could handle his own if he needed to Mm -hmm. And uh, so how how did you find Valentin? I found him, so I collaborated with a casting director um, and she really did a great job of just narrowing down the options for me. And, you know, there was still a variety of, of um, videos I was watching, um, auditions I was watching. And Valentin definitely struck my eye right away because he, like I said, he's just very, he's very good about subtly showing emotion without doing a lot and being dramatic I think with his face he can it's like a move of an eyebrow it suddenly changes in expression you know and so um he he was really just he, he played on actors access I believe with my casting director and she also agreed that he was like a force to be reckoned with and I reached out to him and he was so like willing to do anything we did um an in-person sort of rehearsal at UCLA. They have sound stages there. He would come every time, super motivated and encouraged. And then, you know, just along the way, he was super curious. I also gave him like playlists to listen to music that like, um, you know, Mikey would listen to and different resources. And it was like every single thing he just absorbed. What's one, mo what's one song that would, or what type of music was on that playlist? A lot of it was like music I listened to growing up from my dad, like um, a huge song that I grew up with um, is uh, Lighter Shade of Brown, which I don't know if you know the song, but it got really popular in this area, East LA. It's quite I'm popular gonna, now. Like it sounds familiar, but it doesn't, like, I'm not sure. So I'm going to listen to it right after. Yeah, please give it a listen. Definitely shows like the aura of like 90s LA, I think. And what are you doing now? Um, is it, it, are you going to try to turn this into a longer project? Are you focused on different stories? What, what are you up to? As of now, I'm focused on a different story. Um, I'm guilty of 
essentially I wrote a longer script for this and I was in the process of doing that post-grad. But I think sometimes uh, as creatives, we find ourselves itching for something different. And in this case, I have been really inspired to start a new script, a feature about this young woman who goes through this very uh, gory tragedy of um, her boyfriend passing in a car accident that she survives and sort of skips in time. And we find that she joins this community, this group of friends. You see some overlap here. And she later discovers that she and her friends are part of this um, religious cult (laughs) that she kind of like seamlessly doesn't even know she's in. It's almost like she finds herself in it in the middle. So that's that sounds that sounds so good, Anneli. I'm not joking. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Love it. I can't wait to hear more of how that how that goes. Thank you. I'm so glad that 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 we're in touch and that your your movie is going to be screening at our festival. Um, and I hope that, you know, more connections are sparked from it and that it's, it's a fruitful, uh, festival for you. No, thank you so much. Like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful for you guys and the opportunity you're giving, you know, Latino creatives to share these stories. So thank you. Anali, such a pleasure and, um, can't wait to, to screen soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lisa. <laughs>